In this video, we've moved on to another file named part 060 logic control. This is in the folder part 07 underscore branching. As always, all the links to this content are available in the video description. It's in a Google Drive folder that you can view and download those files. Now I'm going to split up this file part 060 logic control into a bunch of different videos. But this first video is going to focus on an introduction to the if statement. We'll also see some else and some relational operators, just a basic introduction to conditionals. Later videos will expand upon these topics. All the code in this first video works exactly as it is shown here in Octave as well. All right, so I'll run my formatting right here, control enter, scrolling on down. I'm just going to talk through a few more of the comments. So basically every programming language has control structures. That is code that you're going to write that determines what other code gets executed, what gets skipped, what gets repeated. There are three basic categories of control structures. Sequence, which kind of maybe doesn't even need its own name because that's the default. By default, our code runs from the top of the file down to the bottom of the file. But there's also selection, including but not limited to if, else if, and else, and repetition loops, which we will see in future videos. Now to decide what code is actually going to get executed and what code is going to get skipped, we need some way of generating true-false values, true-false expressions. Now commonly, we're going to use these numeric relational operators to compare. Is the thing on the left less than the thing on the right, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, equal to, or not equal to? Please note that the less than or equal to, the order, and with the greater than or equal to, and the not, the order matters and there cannot be a space in between. So less than or equal to, that's good. If you turn your head sideways, look, it's a smiley face. If you try and do it the other way, as a less than or equal to, turn your head sideways the other way, no, frowny face, that doesn't work. But good news, it's basically how we would normally speak it, less than or equal to, same with the greater than or equal to, same with the not equal to, and there can't be a space in this one either. Also note the equal to. This is two equal signs right together not a single equal sign. Single equal sign is an assignment statement. That means we are putting information into a variable. This is a different thing. This is where we're comparing the equality of what's on the left side of the double equals to what's on the right side. This is a lot closer to how we use the equal sign in mathematics. And also worth noting is that the not in MATLAB is the tilde, not a commonly used key. Check on your keyboard far up and to the left, right below escape, your tilde key should be right around there. And once we've got expressions that evaluate to a true or false value, we're going to further combine those using logical operators, such as and, or. So is this true and this other thing is true? If they're both true, then the overall result will be true. Is this thing true or this other thing is true? Well, if either one or both of them are true, well, then it's true, right? Or is the very flexible one. Now, MATLAB provides both short circuit logical and element wise logical operations. I will get into the differences between those in a later video. The tilde, as I mentioned, is logical not. So if you put the tilde before something that's true, now you have something that's false. If you put the not before something that's false, now you have something that's true. XOR means exclusive OR, and this is actually the most common usage of OR in language, right? If I say, do you want to go get Mexican food or Chinese food? I'm not expecting you to say yes both. I'm expecting you to choose one or the other exclusive. But this is less commonly used in programming. More often we want the more inclusive or, where it's like yes this is true or that is true or they're both true. MATLAB also provides functions named any and all to check are any of the values in a given vector true or are all of the values in a given vector true. And we'll see some examples of their usage. Continuing on down. All right, here's our first basic example. Let me resize my window and run it. So I've got three vectors here, a vector named x, which I put in one through five, a vector named y, where I put in the values negative three through one ascending, and then a new vector here named z. And I set z equal to the comparison of x and y. So x less than y. And what I got out, the values stored in this vector named z is just a bunch of zeros. These zeros result from a pairwise or elementwise comparison, less than comparison, of the values in x and y. And zero is used to represent false, and one would be used to represent true. So is it true or false that one is less than negative three? Well, that's false, zero. Two is less than negative two, false.
false, zero, and so on. Continuing on down, using the same data, except I'm gonna modify the fourth value in the y vector to be 999, and then doing the exact same comparison. And also noting I had spaces here before, but you don't have to have those spaces the same way you don't need to have these spaces. Although personally, I think this spacing is the easiest to read. We can see that this is a comparison, and where are we putting those results? Well, we're putting those results into a variable named z. Now, our z vector is not just all zeros. There's a one, because is it true that four is less than 999? Yes, that is true. We actually get a one right here. And if you try and display out like that fourth value of z, it displays as one, but you also get the word logical right here, which is a little bit weird. Try not to be frightened by that. You can very much treat this as a numeric value. For instance, z plus nine is in fact 10. All right, continuing on down, working with some of our same vectors here, but this time I'm gonna change the y vector to be just totally different values, four, six, eight, zero, twelve. I'm going to do the exact same comparison, is x less than y, and now it's mostly true, but not true in the fourth case. Is 4 less than 0? No, that is not true. And by the way, I'm just displaying out the vectors just like this. Continuing on down, and here is our first if statement. So I just executed this code. I set z equal to 5, just the value of 5, and I said, is z less than 9? And if that is true, we're going to run the code between the first line beginning with if and the end line ending with the word end. And since that is true, five is less than nine, it prints out that is true. And also this line right here after the end is going to be executed regardless of the truth or falsehood of this statement right here. So I want you to think of if as basically a detour. If this is true, then we feel like going on the detour, we're gonna run this code, but we're gonna end up where we were gonna end up regardless. And if this is false, then we don't feel like going on the detour. Then the code between the if and the end is going to be skipped. So if z is 55 instead of 5, and we rerun it, now the that is true does not appear in the command window. It got skipped. Continuing on down. Now, what if we have a whole vector of values? And I'm going to run this more than once. I'm going to make an adjustment on this line here in a second. So my x vector, though, for the current run, is 1 through 5, and my y vector is 4, 6, 8, 100, 12. And then we're going to check and see if x is less than y. We're going to do an element-wise comparison. Is 1 less than 4, 2 less than 6, 3 less than 8, 4 less than 100, 5 less than 12? And those are all true. So when we do that check, if x less than y, well, since that's true, we're going to run all the code between if and, oh, what's this? We'll talk about that in a second. But that code does run, right? It prints out right here. Now I added some extra complexity with the else right here. The way else works is that you have to put it after an if and the ifs indented code. And then it's basically like saying, well, if not x less than y. In fact, this is almost equivalent, but I would have to add in the end right here. Otherwise things get a little messed up. So now this code is equivalent to just having else right here, but else is easier to write. So it's convenient. So we like to have that convenience. Now, instead of a detour, we have a fork in the road. The road goes to the left or the road goes to the right, and you have to choose one or the other. There's no third option that you can do. So if I comment out this line right here, think about what do you think is gonna happen? What is the truth and false values going to look like? And how will that affect our if and our else right here? It might not be obvious. Okay, you have three, two, one, I'm running it. So the true and false values are still mostly true. One is less than four, two is less than six. The only difference is that four is not less than zero. So we get a false or zero value right there. And yet we did not execute this code. We skipped it and instead ran this code right here. We chose to take the other fork in the road. Why is that? Well, because MATLAB in allowing you to compare whole vectors of values has decided that it's basically like you have an all function wrapped around these. This statement is only going to be considered overall true by an if, if all the values are true. Now, if that's not what you want, if you just want any of the values to be true, well, good news. You could just literally put the any function right there. But that's not the default. It's basically as if the all function is right there. It's not majority rule. It's not majority vote. It's we got to have unanimous 100% trues for it to be counted as true. 
otherwise it is counted as false. And then regardless of the ifs and the else, by the end right here, we will still run any further code that follows. Okay, to recap and add a little bit more, we start with an if, and then something that's true or false, and then a bunch of indented code. Now, will this code work if it's not indented? Sure it will, but it's a lot harder to read, and it's harder to tell what might be run or what might be skipped. So it is very good practice to make sure you indent your code. I'm just using the tab key to just tab it all in. Some programming languages will mandate that you have to indent your code. Python is the one that comes to mind. And all programming languages, I'm thinking of the C's and the Java's, recommend that you indent your code inside of if and else blocks. This is known as a block of code. And then the if is concluded either by an end, which we saw earlier, or potentially by an else. And if it is an else, then basically this is the alternative. If this is true, do this. Otherwise, do this thing down here. And one or the other will happen. And then finally, we're going to close it all off with the word end. Continuing on down. In this example right here, uh, I simply select the first row, first column value from the vector x and check if it's less than the first row, first column value from y. If you only want to compare individual values from a vector, you will need to index into those values. I have an if and an else ended right here, same as before. And since this is initially true, it prints out first value of x is less than first value of y. Now, if I change, I have this little commented line of code here, and if I uncomment it and run it again, now they are not less, and so this else code will run instead. Continuing on down, in this section, I'm going to demonstrate the any and all functions. So let's go ahead and run it. So here are my x and y vectors that I'm using, same vectors from before. And I set z equal to x greater than y. Do note that I used to be doing x less than y. I did switch it around for some reason. I'm not sure why I chose to do that, but I did. X is greater than y here. And this is my result. So we got a true, false, false, true, false. And then we can ask, are any of those values in z true? And yeah, some of them are. So the overall result of the any function is 1, indicating true. But then if we ask, are all of the values in z true? Well, no, they're not. I mean, there's three false values. So all reports 0, or false. These are logical values. If I just display the value out like this, it does say it's a logical 0. But you can use it as if it was a number. Continuing on down, try to guess what this code is going to display out before I run it. We're comparing a vector of four numbers to a single scalar value, a single number. Is it going to print A or B, or is it going to break? You have until 3, 2, 1, go. It displays out A. They just decided that in MATLAB, if you're going to compare a vector to a single number, MATLAB assumes that we are comparing each and every one of these numbers to this number right here. In fact, if we copy x less than y and paste it over in the command window and hit enter, we will get a logical array of four values. Is 2 less than 100? Yes. Is 4 less than 100? Yes. 6 less than 100? 8 less than 100. Continuing on down. All right, take a guess. What's going to be displayed by this code? A or B? I have two different vectors. Now, this is just a review of the content covered. This is not new material. So, I don't know, pause the video. You have until 3, 2, 1. All right, B is displayed here. Now, 2 is less than 5, and that's what we're checking. But we're also checking is 4 less than 7, and that's also true. We're also checking is 6 less than 0. No, that's false. Is 8 less than 9? Yes, that's true. Now, it's majority true, but majority does not matter. It matters, is it all true, or are some of them false? So since some of them are false, we execute the else code and skip the if code. And that is all for our introduction to if statements, logical operators, control flow, control structures. Next video is going to continue onward with logical operators in more detail. We're going to look at the use of and and or to say, OK, is z greater than x and z is greater than y? How can we make use of that? What about x greater than y or x greater than z? So that's where we'll start off next time.